This is Anarchast. Hey, revolutionaries. This is Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I'm Jeff Berwick. I'm coming in from Santiago, Chile. I'm down here looking over our development, Galtz Galtz Chile, a new anarchist libertarian community. And I have a really interesting guest today because of what's going on in Cyprus. His name is Justin Hagelambris, and he's in Paphos, Cyprus, and uh, he's an anarchist. And the very first question I always ask first-time guests, Justin, is how did you become an anarchist? Uh, you know, I think that everybody is actually born an anarchist, and they just don't know it yet. So I think I was just born that way, to realize that the state is always killing the social aspect of life. And uh, so you were born that way. Did you ever think about the philosophy or you just always just been this way? No, of course. Um, I started reading. Um, the first book I read was uh, Economics in One Lesson when I was in college. Um, I went to the University of Los Angeles. And uh, after I read that book, my mind really opened up to a lot of economic fallacies. And then I got uh, really intrigued by Murray Rothbard. Um, he wrote some pretty cool books like um, An Ethics for Liberty, um, or The Ethics of Liberty, and um, Man, Economy, State. And so I just kept reading Austrian economics books, um, got involved with Ron Paul, and it started from there. That's great. Yeah, the uh, economics in one lesson is excellent. It's very small for anyone. If, if you think you don't understand economics, that's because the economics the state wants you to understand is not meant to be understood. It actually can all be explained very quickly in a very short book. And uh, you, can, you can know economics. It's, an, it's uh, not that hard. Uh, and yeah, for, and for, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> and um, well, it must be interesting for you understanding uh, free market economics uh, to be in Cyprus right now. Uh, what's it been like in the last few weeks? I know there's, there's been bank closures for a while. They've now have the, I don't even know if the banks have reopened yet, but they're going to take 40%, steal 40% in the daylight bank robbery of anyone's account over, I believe, 100,000 euros. Uh, what's it been like on the ground? Uh, so the banks are supposed to reopen on Thursday, and on the ground, it's, it's very unusual. Uh, I've noticed when I go to the supermarket or to a coffee shop, there's a lot less people around. And the the climate is just, or the uh, the emotions people have are just kind of like, uh, they feel betrayed. Uh, they're very um, angry, very confused. And uh, the general sentiment is that they think that they're being used for their resources because they recently found a lot of hydrocarbons in the sea. Interesting. And so right now, uh, there's no ATMs working. People can't get out any cash. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, they they don't they they're not able to do that. And an, an interesting thing is actually, I think it was yesterday morning, somebody bombed one of the banks in Limassol, which is like um, probably an hour from here. <clears throat> they threw must, must have been an anarchist. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they said, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> There's some crazy people there. There's a lot of different parties. They have a communist party, and then they have, yeah. Yeah. you know, and so on. Yeah, those. it's always the communists that bomb stuff. Uh, us anarchists don't do that. Uh, it's not really what we do. Um, yeah, it's very interesting to me because, of course, I write the Dollar Vigilante newsletter, and the whole newsletter is all about the coming financial collapse of the monetary system collapse, which, of course, uh, we're seeing very abruptly here in Cyprus in the last few weeks. As a person who understands economics or Austrian economics, did you sort of see this coming at all, or was this sort of a, a surprise to you as well? No, I, I didn't think it was a big surprise, um, because after they bought the Greek bonds um, and they saw what happened to Greece, I thought it was um, it was just understandable that this would happen. You know, um, you you let you lend people money that couldn't repay it, so. It's inevitable that you yourself are going to have financial problems. Yeah, and the, the entire status banking system and central banks, these are not things that you have in a free market. Uh, and, and they always collapse. And people seem to be scared of the free market uh, saying, oh, that'd be chaos. Well, this is chaos, and it's going to get more chaotic. I think 
this is just the beginning. Uh, we're going to see uh, this happening around the Western world over the next few years, and people uh, should be preparing for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, how do you how do you uh, advise preparing for something like this, though? Because it seems like it's well, becoming global. Well. Oh yeah, for sure. It is going to be global. And uh, I've been writing about it now for about three years. And uh, some of the things that I advise, one thing which would have helped people in Cyprus is I tell people to keep at least a few months worth of cash in their in their house uh, in ca case the ATMs go down, which they will, and they are in Cyprus right now. I also say to invest in precious metals, uh, anything that the central bank can't inflate or counterfeit or steal. And, uh, and also keep some of them, a uh, majority of them if you can, outside of your own country because... Uh, as these capital controls go into place, it'll be very hard to move things around. And another big one, of course, and this is something I just announced this this week, is uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we just started the world's first Bitcoin ATM. We're planning on putting it in Cyprus. We're talking with people right now uh, about uh, putting the first one there. And that makes total sense. And if people had already converted to Bitcoin, uh, this uh, banking problem wouldn't have been a problem at all. And so this is uh, some of the ways that people can uh, trans... Uh, you know, make the transgression, or I forget the exact word, that they can, uh, you know, slowly move towards uh, a more orderly uh, way to get through this financial system collapse, because it's going to happen. It's 100% going to happen. If you understand the numbers involved, if you understand how indebted everything is, including the, uh, the all the Western countries, the U.S. is the worst of them. The U.S. is far worse than Cyprus in terms of debt. Um, uh, you will know that this is going to happen. So you can wait until it happens and then panic, or you can prepare now, uh, have a lot of assets in hard assets, gold, silver, uh, real estate. Uh, we're down here in Chile, we have a lot of people wanting to buy uh, real estate here. That's another great way to divest your assets if you have assets. And uh, But most of all, just being aware that this can happen and it will happen uh, because uh, many people, as you know, in Cyprus were really surprised by this. Yeah, and I think it's also interesting because uh, the coming effects of this are probably going to be that people want to withdraw their money from the yeah, banks. Right. So right. it seems like you would only increase criminal activity because people are going to know that their neighbor has money, you know. And and the, and Cyprus is really built upon the banking infrastructure. I mean, their their main things are banking and tourism, and their banking is held up by like Russian money, and their tourists are mostly Russian people, and so by you know asking to uh, add a tax to deposits above $100,000, it's like you're directly attacking them as people. So you're losing your tourism and your banking. So now people don't have jobs, and then you're going to have a huge withdrawal. So, I mean, I'm curious about what will happen in terms of uh, increased unrest, you know? Oh, definitely. That That's a definite possibility. Uh, this, could, this could really destroy... Cyprus uh, for the next few years for sure. Uh, like you just said, the main two things are banking and tourism. There's not going to be much banking going on there, I don't think, anymore. And uh, uh, if, if a lot of the people whose money was stolen were Russian and they're the main tourists, they might have a bad f feeling about visiting Cyprus for a few years. So uh, yeah, it's a giant mess, all caused by the state and central banks. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 very, um, it's very disappointing. And then they, they, a lot of people say to us as anarchists who, who believe in a completely free market, oh, that's too scary, you know, that, that, that would be chaotic. Well, this is what happens with statism. It becomes incredibly chaotic. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. We might have you on in the next few months again and, and see how things are progressing there. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I, I definitely wonder... Um I definitely wonder about uh, what will happen when you have a country that becomes uh, very uh, chaotic. Because if you have natural resources, a lot of the times countries get kind of taken over. It's like a neo-colonialism, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. And if yeah. they're, they're like the mini Falcon Islands, or so I've read, you know? <laughs> oh, definitely. You could see Russia uh, making some moves there. It could actually cause World War III <laughs> in the end if the, if the Russians decide... Uh, they're so angry that they're going to come and just take those resources and then the US of course will not like that and who knows what could happen this is a this could be the linchpin that starts the entire um, worldwide uh, monetary collapse and war and uh, yeah it could be very interesting do you think that there actually will be a World war three in the imminent future or is this more of just like a fear-mongering from higher higher like uh, states 
I'm hoping there won't be. I, I think thanks to the internet, uh, they can't do these wars the way they used to. Uh, people see it as being blatantly immoral. They, they won't get fooled by propaganda as much anymore. Uh, but who knows, if, if people start to panic, if things get crazy, uh, anything can happen. And so that's, that's part of the reason we started down here, Gulf Gulf's Chile. Uh, Chile is a fantastic economy. I think it will survive better than most economies on earth. And on top of that, our property is sort of in the middle of nowhere, although it's fairly close to Santiago. It's about an hour from here, but it's completely surrounded by mountains. And uh, I think it'll be one of the better places to sit out uh, this coming financial collapse. Yeah, so after the financial collapse, uh, what do you think is going to be uh, booming or emerging sectors? Ah, that's a very good question. We've never had a global financial monetary system collapse, so there's no way to look in the past for any clues. Uh, anything could happen, but again, uh, thanks to the internet, I think there's tons of potential that we could actually move. This could be the thing that moves the world towards true anarchy, which means true free markets, free banking, uh, free market money like Bitcoin, gold and silver, uh, in whatever form it comes. You don't have to actually trade gold and silver coins. I'm sure entrepreneurs will come up with ways to uh, make it so you can just have a credit card which is tied to your gold, which is sitting somewhere. And um, uh, so, yeah, there's, there's no way to know what's going to happen. This is going to be the most dangerous period in human history in the coming years, in my opinion, on a global level. In the past, you always had countries collapse, currencies collapse. But it was just one or two countries or currencies, uh, so you could easily uh, get around those if you were smart. Uh, now it's there's not going to be many places to hide, so people better be preparing now. Yeah, and you said by preparing, you buy assets. Yeah, it, just get yourself outside of the uh, the status financial and monetary system. Uh, don't. Um, have a lot of money in a bank account anywhere. Uh, don't uh, just keep what you need for expenses and things like that. With the rest, I would put some in things like Bitcoin. I'd have some in gold. I, 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 I'm doing all these things myself. I have a gold and silver in probably 20 different countries, if not more. Uh, actually, way more than that if you include mining stocks, which I own. And that's just another way of owning a, an asset, which is actually in the ground. Uh, so these, and then I have real estate. Uh, I have a place at Doug Casey's La Estancia de Cafajate in Argentina. I'm building a community here in Chile. I have property in Mexico. I actually have a uh, condos in Mexico in Acapulco, uh, which a lot of anarchists have actually started to move there as well. Uh, so that that's some of the things I'm doing to prepare for what I see coming. Yes. Yeah, so what about like uh, resources such as like farming and water and things mm. like that? Mm. Um, is that something that's also part of your community, or yes. do you do you still yes. have to buy that from people, like collective like farming? Yeah, absolutely. We've uh, we see that there could be a complete collapse of the transportation system, food system for a period of time, and because of that, uh, yes, Gulch Gulch is being modeled to be completely sustainable. We're trying to have all things that we need to exist all on the property itself. And we're working towards that. With uh, we're going to try to do organic farming. We're just in negotiations right now to buy another farm uh, that uh, and an area that we could turn into organic farming. Um, so yeah, we're that's that's how we're thinking. I know it sounds crazy to a lot of people, but I really think there's going to be major, major problems in the coming years. And uh, you have to think for yourself and be de uh, independent and be around other li like-minded uh, independent people as well is also something very good. You don't want to be living around a bunch of communists when everything collapses because those people are incredibly violent and, <laughs> and they, they, uh, you, know, you want to be around people who are more anarchists, who, who really are, are self-sufficient, uh, independent. Uh, they don't believe in the status systems, uh, the, the status monetary system, central banking. Uh, so uh, those sort of people are the kind of people you'd want to be around and that's what we're trying to do in both Acapulco and down here in Chile. Yeah, personal responsibility. Uh, so you, you you don't worry that it's possible that after there is a financial collapse that people won't be duped into another system like Brad Woods number three, you know? Uh, definitely, it's totally possible. Again, though, thanks to the internet, I think it's it's uh, there's hope that people won't be duped as easily. Uh, my take on it is if the entire monetary system collapses and dollars are worthless, euros are worthless, uh, yen is worthless, uh, that will make people a little bit more wary of the state in the future. So if the state comes back and goes, well, sorry, we destroyed everything, millions of people died and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Sorry about that. We've got a new idea. It's going to be called the new U.S. dollar, the Liberty dollar or something, Patriot dollar. Uh, 
people will be less likely to be duped into buying into those systems again. And there's thanks to the internet, things like Bitcoin, gold, and silver. Uh, we have we actually have another thing, uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin dot com, uh, that uh, we uh, exchange gold and silver directly for Bitcoin without going through any currencies. Uh, so these are things that entrepreneurs are doing. Uh, and they're popping up all over the place. Uh, you'll also see things, you see many communities in the U.S. where they've already started to uh, make their own currency or start to use gold and silver as currency. Uh, so people are already seeing what's happening and starting to transition. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. It's definitely going to be interesting. Yeah, it is going to be very interesting. You're very fortunate to have uh, such a great ideas and be able to implement them. Yeah, no, it's uh, fantastic. It's an incredibly... Um, uh, there's a lot of potential uh, for doing business now. Uh, people say a lot of the stuff I talk about is very pessimistic, but I see it as being optimistic. We just have to get through this transition of the collapse of the state and the central banks. Uh, and as that occurs, and when it occurs, there's going to be tremendous business opportunities, but you're going to need to have some assets at that point. That's why you have to be able to protect your assets now, be in a position to buy up whatever you want to buy up during the collapse, be in a position to... to uh, do any sort of business, there's going to be an, an incredible need for new businesses as the states collapse. There's going to be need for uh, more private security. There's going to be need for uh, private courts, uh, things like judge.me on the internet. So a lot of these things will be internet based. Uh, there's going to be tremendous opportunity. Uh, so, and I, I also believe Bitcoin is an incredible opportunity. I'm, I'm investing like crazy in it right now. I've, we're doing Bitcoin ATM. We have gold, silver, Bitcoin. Uh, we're talking about doing a Bitcoin stock exchange. Uh, all of these things are potential billion dollar or billion Bitcoin ideas that, uh, you know, th this is where fortunes get made is during times of great uh, paradigm shifts. How did you get into uh, Bitcoin? <clears throat> well, I first, <laughs> I, I sense I'm being interviewed here and not interviewing you, but that's fine. Hey, uh, if you want to ask me <laughs> no, 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 this is fine. Your questions are good. Uh, I first heard about Bitcoin only probably maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, I think it's only really been around for three or four years, maybe five max. I'm not sure of the history, uh, but really it's catching on like crazy right now. There's a person selling their house in Canada for Bitcoins. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, activity in places like Argentina, Iran, uh, where they have capital controls. It's sort of similar to what's going on in Cyprus, but even worse. Uh, they, uh, a lot of people have started to just trade in Bitcoins. So this is uh, catching on like crazy. I'm going to be on CNBC and Fox uh, News, I, I believe, next week. They've invited me on to talk about Bitcoin. Uh, so, so things are changing very fast right now. And of course, when things change, there's a lot of opportunity. But there's also a lot of risk if you're not prepared for it. Yeah, yeah. I can see both coming, the risk yep. and the opportunity. So anyway, it's been very nice having you on, uh, Justin Hagelambris. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And... And um, yeah, go hey, ahead. Uh, uh, you uh, you told me you, you I read I read an article on your page about um, Myers Briggs. Yes. Um, how did you learn about that? I heard because it seems like a lot of libertarians are very interested in that. Yeah, they are. I was actually at Libertopia, and a girl came up to me. I just been on stage, and I had a I was like quite outspoken and kind of almost debating very strongly with a guy who really believed in armies and war. And uh, a woman, a, a girl came up to me and she says, oh, you must be, um, what did she say? She, sa she didn't say INTJ. She said, yeah, I think she said INTJ. Yeah. The master. And, uh, or no, she said, e uh, I forget. The one, I is for introverted, right? And then there, yeah. what's the other one? E for? Uh, there's, well, there's uh, eight letters. The first two are either E or I, introvert, extrovert. The second one, right. sensor or intuition, S or N. And the third is T or F, thinking and feeling. And the fourth is perceiving and judging, P or J. Right. Okay. So she came up and she said she thought I was ENTJ because I was so outspoken and all that sort of stuff. So I w I did, I'd never heard of it. So I went and did the test and I was an INTJ. And, uh, and so I kind of understand why she thought I was ENTJ because I can, in, it, you know, I'm so passionate about what I talk about that it, it seems like I'm an extrovert, but I'm not, I'm really not. I, I, I'm more introverted. I don't enjoy going out into big crowds and talking all day. I'm not really like that. I'd rather be on my computer and stuff. And so the interesting thing that you were bringing up is we wrote about this on the Dollar Vigilante. We asked all uh, freedom-loving people, libertarians, anarchists, uh, to do the Myers-Briggs test. And I think only 3% or 4% of the world population is INTJ. 
but we had about 80% of anarchists and libertarians said they were INTJ. So, and so for people who are watching this who don't know what we're talking about, it's sort of like a personality test to see what kind of personality you are. And it turns out the most freedom-minded people tend to be this thing called INTJ, and it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because um, it's not actually about introvert, extrovert in terms of liking crowds or not. It's uh, the functions. So if you are an INTJ, your function is uh, introverted intuition. So it's kind of like being psychic in a sense. Like you're able to see many things and then come to a conclusion within you, like a, uh, deal with all the information at once. So that's where the intuition is, is because you have self-thought. Ah, very interesting. That makes sense because I, I've actually paid attention to that a little bit and, and what kind of personality type I am. And I caught myself recently that I often say, I don't say I think this, I actually say, I sense this is where it's going. So, I'm, I'm that, so I am that INTJ, I guess. Do you find that you're right most of the time? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all the time. Yeah, kind of scary. Kind of scary. Kind of scary, yeah, because we just had this conversation. Now I'm really worried. <laughs> I'm going to go in the ocean, or, I mean, in the sea right now. But. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you'll be okay. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, this has been a really great conversation, and I'm, I, I, I will almost certainly have you back on in a, in a few weeks or months as things progress in Cyprus. So, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. It was great talking to you. Good luck with uh, Bitcoin. I hope to see it in Cyprus. Yeah, we're, we're trying to get over there in the next few weeks, and uh, maybe we can meet in person. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. I've been reading it in the foreign newspapers, so I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be cool. All right. Thank you very much. That's been another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace. Love and energy.